Good evening, everybody. And we're having a nice evening here in Pittsburgh. Not a cloud in the sky, nice and sunny, 65 degrees, we're warmer. All right, uh, we're going to kind of concentrate on the scanning techniques. And what I'm going to do is kind of go through the uh, uh, the rhetoric of what we're looking for in the scans. And then Jeff Gibby with Metastock is going to be coming on. Um, I'll, uh, afterwards and kind of show how scanning techniques use Metastock is very effective. So uh, anyways, so we're going to work on uh, the scans and basically what it's trying, when we can scan, we get the opportunities to find all the trade setups that are going to big be bringing uh, big price moves and gaps. So essentially what we're looking for is that high profit, high probability trade setup. So going back to the rhetorical, what do we expect? Uh, or where do we expect the price reversal? And how do we identify the strongest price moves? Well, obviously, whoops. obviously, if you know what each of these 12 major signals represent, and the, uh, the psychology behind them, it becomes extremely easy to find the big trades. Some of the scans, we're trying to find that reversal signal followed by a gap up. And if you understand what a gap represents. Let's see, is everybody not having sound? Uh, Rick, you might have to let Gerald know that uh, he might have to log off and log right back on again. So, the best trades that I find are a candlestick reversal signal and that gap. And that gap is basically telling you there's a lot of force. So this essentially uh, boils down to that what we're doing is looking at for common sense put into a graphic depiction. So when we're looking for the buy signals, what essentially are we looking for? Well, it's important that we see where the stochastics are because a lot of people will say, well, isn't that a buy signal or a bullish engulfing signal? But if it's occurring in the overbought condition, it doesn't mean very much. So essentially what we're looking for is that common sense element that's put into graphic depiction where the Japanese rice traders kind of illustrate where most people sell. They panic sell at the bottom. On the other side, where do most people buy? They usually buy exuberantly at the top. So as long as we know that, and this is what turned my investing around years ago. I was a stockbroker with Kidder Peabody, Cowan and Company, and Oppenheimer for eight years. And I was probably the worst investor in the world, and I was a stockbroker telling people how to invest their money. Because all they were doing is telling you to recommend what the brokerage firm was recommending. And what I discovered was the brokerage firms, and the analysts have no more idea about what makes a stock go up or down than anybody else. So when candlesticks came along, I could usually say this was me, usually selling. And I could never figure out when everything looked great and I was buying, how come it seemed to turn right around and go the opposite way? And then just when I can't stand the pain anymore and I close out the position, it turns around and heads back up. So knowing that I always did that, Looking at a candlestick chart kind of told me, all right, if this is me down here, I should be doing the opposite. I should be looking for buy signals. I should be looking for sell signals. Now, another important element that uh, has come into the analysis using candlesticks is the T-line. So, so the T-line is very important. This is what the Dow is doing today. The first criteria that I use, or anybody should use, when they're scanning for trades, is which way is the general market moving? If it's an uptrend, obviously we're going to be looking for scans uh, on the bullish side. If it's a downtrend, 
We're looking for scams to the downside. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that every trade or every good trade in the market is a bearish trade at this point. We're looking for those type of things where we can see there's been a reversal. And the T-line, again, is the eight exponential moving average. And the very simple rule of the T-line is that we want to see a buy signal and a close above the T-line. With the caveat, um, let's see. Okay, yeah, people getting their charts straightened out. With the caveat being that the further away you move from the T-line, especially with your stochastics in the oversold area, and my stochastic settings are 12.33, and that's set in stone. Just I spent a night trying to tweak the uh, stochastics to where the, the bottoms were at the bottom and the tops were at the tops. And because I'm a swing trader, 1233 seem to work, and it seems to work on all the charts that I that I use, whether I'm day trading, swing trading, or longer-term investing. But the further away you move from the T-line and you see a potential reversal signal, the higher the probability it's at least going to come back up and test the T-line. So if you see a, a gap down doji in the oversold condition, we're starting to look for a buy signal, which would be bullish confirmation. If it starts trading positive, where's our first target? Well, we'd like to see it get up above the T-line, but if the worst case scenario occurred that it came up and failed at the T-line, at least we're probably out of the trade on a bad trade with a little bit of a profit. Uh, another aspect of candlesticks that is another uh, another day. Uh, yes, I use the 1233 on daily, weekly, monthly, as well as the one minute, five minute, 10 minute, on all the charts, they all work works exactly the same way. Oh, uh, now I forgot what I was talking about. Huh. Well, that ain't a fine howdy do. What if I find a candle that sticks? Uh, Jamie, remember the signal is the most important aspect. You're not trading the market, you're trading the uh, signals. The T-line, I was saying something about the T-line. Again, uh, if it fails here at the T-line and I come back out of the trade, at least hopefully it came back out with a little bit of a uh, a, a profit. Oh, and so on the other side, if this is my buy signal, and this is a whole different uh, training session, uh, would be where do we set our stops? And so logic says, if we're in the oversold area, we see a doji, and we know the simple rule of doji, that the prices are going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji, that it should be trading positive, especially if that we're that far away from the T-line. So the other side of that logic is, where should it not trade? It shouldn't trade back down through the doji. If it does, you close out the position because it's not doing what it's supposed to. That's all part of that process of, Cutting your losses short and let your profits run. Do you trade or can you trade? I if I I used to trade the E minis uh, on the with a one minute, three minute, ten minute chart combination. Right now I trade slower because I don't have time to watch fast faster moving trades. Um, I'll use a the 10 minute chart as my bellwether. When it's setting up, then I'll flip down to my five minute to see if it's confirming the 10 minute. And if I'm ready to do something, I flip to the one minute to make sure it's still moving in the right direction. Can we buy once the market breaches high of Doji? Uh, yes, that's another. So on the other side, if you were short, you saw it gap down. If it has enough strength to come back up through the high of the Doji, you close out your position. You can also be buying at that point with the expectation it's going to come back up and test, test the T-line. Again, this is all, all based upon what human nature does time after time. When you see a gap down in the oversold area, start watching for a buy signal. You see a gap down in the oversold area, 
start watching for a buy signal. And this is the, the great advantage of the graphics of candlesticks. Notice when this one opened, you immediately can see that there was a warming, which told you exactly what was happening. But there was buyers after the open. And where was this occurring? Down here in the overbought condition. Hey, yes, these are, re are recorded. Well, Shazam, I think I just bought some crude oil. Okay, let's see. So anytime, this is one of the other major signals or patterns. This is what we call the belt hold signal. And the Japanese rice traders explain it that the two wrestlers are, are fighting. One's trying to back out of the ring. The other one grabs his belt and pulls him back into the ring. Now, what that does is tells you there was lots of sellers. Now the sellers are out of the way, and that usually creates a very strong price move. So just identifying the signal and understanding what was occurring from that signal allows the candlestick investor to know what's happening based upon the supply and demand of, of a, a trading entity. But if that belt hold occurs, it means they've just wiped out a lot of sellers. So that means there's no sellers in the way. The uptrend, any buying, is going to experience some very strong uptrend. So again, the signals are the indecisive trading, the doji in the oversold area where they've gapped it down. That started Amazon in an uptrend. So if you're buying right here, where's our first target? We want to see what happens once it gets here to the uh, key line. If they trade a positive, you, you have an uptrend. How long does that uptrend last? Trade it until you see a candlestick sell signal. Probably took some profits here. They gapped it back up. And notice what's happening right now. Even though they've come back down to the T-line, they've been having a very hard time closing it below the T-line. Uh, could you share what you saw? Oh, uh, crude oil has been in an uptrend, and I've just put a buy stop at an area uh, where on the 10-minute chart it had been trading. Oh, let me just uh, see if I can do this with any great elegance. You can see, I can make this smaller. You can see for quite a while, this is on the one minute chart. This is even better. Here's the five minute chart. You can see it was trading flat. So I had a buy stop up here with the idea that if it came up through here, that the buyers were, uh, or this fry pan bottom was breaking out. So, uh, aren't you counter trend trading? No, crude oil right now is in an uptrend. Uh, your chart is not centered. Uh, oh, it, if it was that chart, yes, it was. Uh, that's good. I just moved it over. All right. So again, if you go back to the basic logic of candlestick, what does the candlestick signal review? There's been a change of investor sentiment. So how do we go out and find these? We've got some very simple formulas for finding the big price moves. There's our belt hold, bullish engulfing, left-right combo. So what can you, uh, what can you assess about this trend? What was fighting between the bulls and the bears. Now, all of a sudden, you've got a huge candle that wiped out a lot of the sellers. Good probability you're going to be in a 45 degree uh, from here. So anytime you see that big signal, remember, the bigger the signal, the more compelling there's been a change of investor sentiment. And this is the type of trend you would expect after that big, uh, big, uh, Reversal signal. Now, you also add everything else that we know about candlestick analysis. You know, this is a fry pan bottom, wave one. 
a pullback. And notice how the pullback was very indecisive. A lot of dojis, indecisive day. And what started the uptrend? A big, huge, decisive move, making this what we call the classic, a fry pan bottom, followed by a J-hook pattern. Now we're right up here at what we call the bobble. The bobble is where you hit a resistance level and you pull back. You can't close below the T-line. So even if you took profits up here, get ready to buy right here because if they break this out, this pattern is another J-hook pattern. Uh, Don, very much so. Uh, and I'll get to that. Uh, let me finish up here. I'll, I'll get the get our questions and answers done before Jeff steps in. So again, part of that uh, support and resistance level is the T-line itself. So anytime we have a a, uh, a trade, we're we've been short Tiffany ever since the kicker signal, right here. And notice what our trend is. They haven't been able to get back up above the T-line. Same scenario. Whoops. Oh, no, I forgot to put guess in here also. Guess was in a downtrend and gaps. So we knew the retailers were in a downtrend. So we have a very simple rule. And back to your question about support and resistance, Don. And that's the T-line rule. T-line rule is very simple. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. So that makes entering a trade very simple. This is what we call your best friend. There's our little doji followed by a gap up and a close above the T-line. Prospects. And the reason we call this your best friend is because not only will this provide a high probability of being an uptrend, but the fact that they came from an indecisive day and gapped it up and closed above the T-line told us that the uptrend was going to be very strong. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average. Dropped out. How do I get back in? Richard, you already must be back in. That's right. Uh, P2 is a triple. So these are what we're looking for. These are what very simple scans can find. Doji's in the oversold area, followed by a gap up, and also followed by a gap up and a close above the T-line. The bigger the gap up, the more compelling that the subtrend is going to be a very strong uptrend. Doesn't necessarily even have to be a Doji, any candlestick signal, like our bullish Harami, followed by a gap up. Now, the reason we like to trade the gaps, or we should be trading the gaps, these are all RAM, these are all daily charts because it's much easier to find illustrations. And most of the time, you're not going to find gaps on your intraday charts. But this could be a one-minute chart, a 10-minute chart, an hourly chart a weekly chart or a monthly chart. They all look exactly the same. So I'm always looking for the candlestick signal in the oversold condition, followed by a gap up, and especially a gap up through the uh, T-line. So even using the gaps, going through resistance, this is what we call, I call convergence analysis, which is, if you see a pattern setting up, notice all the factors that you can put into this buy. First of all, you have that little hammer signal right on the T-line. The next day, they gap it up above the T-line, number one. Number two, oops, that was number two. Gap it up above the T-line and go through the 50. Number three, you can see that it was breaching this little resistance level on the way down. And number four, this is what we call a bobble pattern. Notice how when it came up, it failed at the 50. Now it's coming back up through the 50 the second time, telling us that they've bobbled long enough. Now they're going up uh, up higher. And on top of that, you can see what the whole pattern looks like, a fry pan bottom. And what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? A very strong price move. So this is not rocket science. This is just trying to find the best signals and patterns 
again, coming off of support, going through resistance, because we don't use support and resistance. We use the signals. We use support and resistance as our added confirmation, because what are the graphics of candlestick signals? That's the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling. And if we can see that they're buying on a support level and then gapping up, that told us exactly what everybody was doing at that support level. Uh, are you buying and selling options or buying and selling the stock? Uh, yes, I do both. And what happened up here where I missed? Oh, this one. I missed it. DRX. Notice what it's doing. There was that doji gap down. Brought it back up, and then they had that bearish harami and taking it back down. So what type of pattern do we have setting up now? A bearish J-hook. So on the close, I bought some puts um, with the anticipation that at least they're going to come down and test this level or this level. And if they breach that level, I've got a wave one, wave two, wave three taking me all the way down in this area. So, yes, candlestick signals are not for trading a particular market or entity. Candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of what investor sentiment is doing, no matter what you're trading, whether it's bonds, stocks, uh, currencies, commodities, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed in it. Candlestick signals are the graphic depiction. When is a candle not considered a doji? A doji looks like this or like this, where it has a very small body. Now, this we would call a hammer doji. This one with a little body we call a spinning top, but they represent the same thing. There was indecision between the bulls and the bears. What is the pink line? Oh, let's find a better chart here. This is the 20-day simple moving average. I should have probably uh, started with that. Oops, let me find one that has all of them on there. All right, here's this one. That, the red line is the 200-day simple moving average. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. And this little gray pink line is the 20 day simple moving average. The reason they're on here is because every major money manager around the world uses those moving averages to make their decisions about uh, their portfolio. The advantage we have using candlesticks is we can see exactly what type of investor sentiment is happening at those levels. So, again, yes, we use support and resistance because we can see immediately what's happening at those levels. We can use that. We can use any technique that's going to give us information of why there was a reversal signal, whether it was a trend channel, a trend line, a Fibonacci retracement number, anything that we can throw on the chart to tell us why there was a reversal at a certain level just adds that much more credibility there has been a reversal for some reason uh, in that level. Um, Best friend needs a day third candle to confirm. Not really. If I uh, can't remember which ones we looked at. Let's see if we get a better one. If I see this doji, doji harami, which tells us the selling has stopped, and I see them gapping it open, as soon as I see they're buying, I'm, I'm buying. Because that's already, that is the signal. Somebody asked me, how many days does it take to confirm that your trend reversal has occurred? And the answer is zero. I see a reversal signal and it confirms the next day I'm buying immediately because that's the whole point of recognizing what that reversal signal and confirmation should be doing. How do we apply the T-line techniques to day trading situation, especially uh, with the bid ask? Um, if you're day trading, you know, it doesn't really matter what the bid ask because it's still going to show you because the uh, the T line is still going to be effective for whatever the time frame you're doing. But to get the whipsaw action out, instead of using a one minute chart, 
go to a 10 minute chart and see let's say this was a 10 minute chart and they closed here and the next day they opened here and this is your 10 minute chart you knew you could stay long on this trade until you see it close back below the t-line this could be a five minute chart this could be an hourly chart whatever time frame you want to be trading each each time frame is again the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during that particular time frame uh, can i set metastock to scan for gaps in the proper setup with respect to the t-line yes or do i have to go through many charts no that's the whole point of these scanning softwares norm is that i can i can find the best trade setups for tomorrow in probably less than four or five minutes because all you have to do is update all your scans which are already in place and click through i may if i'm looking for doji gap ups the best friend, there may only be four or five. But they go on my watch list now to see um, see what happens afterwards. Um, if I scan for hammer signals or fry pan bottoms, you've, you've got the formulas already built into the uh, uh, softwares, and that's why that's why uh, Jeff's here for with Metastock because we've spent quite a while developing all those scans so all you have to do is click and refresh them each day how much do you pay attention to what the major markets are doing to determine your general outlook that's my number one criteria is when i wake up or when i'm doing my scans set up each night my first analysis is all right what do i think the market is doing right now i think the market's in a downtrend stochastics just getting back toward the oversold area but where do i anticipate my logical target is going to be probably right here at the 200 so what's that tell me i'm probably in a downtrend for a few more trading days now does that mean it is going to be in a downtrend no but my first inkling is that we're still heading down so i'm going to be looking for uh, scans that tell me which charts look the best for a short now, if the criteria was different, we were down here in the oversold area or down here after being short. Now I'm looking to start covering my short positions and seeing which charge. Remember, with about 10,000 trading entities out there, with your scan setups, you're going to find the best bullish trades in less than five minutes. And you might even look for more bearish trades. But I put out two or three stock picks every night. Not so that people have stock picks, but they can see what the charts are saying and what the rationale was for that that long or short uh, pick. So in some place like this, where we're getting toward the oversold area and we're not trading off with any great uh, conviction, we might still have in our portfolio some longs and some shorts because there's always going to be stocks heading up. We've been long the gold and the oil stocks here for a bit they've been doing some profit taking and the biotechs were good profitable trades and they pulled back but now they're starting to show buying again good uh, good j hook patterns and that type of thing so again not only can you use uh and analyze what the overall market trend is doing but you can pretty much analyze which sectors are the strongest or the weakest so I can scan and say, all right, I think the retails are doing or are showing the weakest. So I'm short retails, and I can also see that the biotechs are acting strong. So with a market that doesn't look like it's heading down with great force and could pop up any time, all right, I've got some biotechs on long, and I've got some uh, retails short. Because those are the probabilities of those sectors moving in that direction. On 427, Facebook had a hammer gap up, and now it is trending down. Why did a trend down after such a strong probability run? Let's see what. Oops. Facebook.
Facebook, this is what we call the message. Gap up, pull back. Now it's come back up until we saw a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. So there was the probability, whoops, that may not have been four, or uh, no, that was April. Okay. So remember, we're buying and selling based upon what's happening in the price trend or investor sentiment. We know after a message, you're going to be in an uptrend until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Okay, so uh, the reason we have Jeff here tonight is because in the chat room, we probably get at least two or three questions a day of how do you scan for the best trades. So with that, Jeff and I have been working together for quite a while, and we got all the formulas set up in Metastock. So with that, I'm going to close down my uh, screen, uh, Rick, and let Jeff put up his screen. So everybody, Jeff will kind of explain the benefits that uh, that you can find in Metastock's software, um, making it very simple to find the best candlestick trades. Uh, with that, there you go. All right, there's Jeff. Okay, uh, let's let's do a little bit of an audio check. One, two, one, two. How do I sound, everybody? Am I too loud, too soft? Let me know. Okay, a lot of good. And you should be able to see a meta stock chart. Uh, that looks like it's coming through as well. So let me know that you can see the screenshot. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about me. Uh, I have a very fun job here at Metastock. I, I absolutely love it. Um, Steve is right. We worked a couple years. Uh, my, my official title these days is Head of Business Development, which sounds a little bit more important than I think it is sometimes, but it's a lot of fun, and I enjoy it. Um, I actually started in Inside Sales here at Metastock. I've been here uh, 19 years as of March 31st, So, and I'll probably be here for a while longer because it's been just a lot of fun. Really, among my responsibilities is uh, to recruit partners like Steve, uh, help them create products that kind of help uh, with their methodology, and it's quite honestly one of the funnest parts of my job. I remember Steve and I and my programmer spent a lot of time actually tweaking out some of his patterns. Uh, we created a great product called Steve Bigelow's Cattle Profit Systems, and it show kind of how it works today. Uh, but it's been enjoyable, so and uh, I definitely have had a lot of experience here, and uh, you know it's a crazy job. Anyway, that's enough about me. Uh, I do need to read. Ooh, I don't have it here. Ah, I'm going to recite our, our legal disclaimer then. Uh, today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features uh, in, in the program. Uh, trading should be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Uh, Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software. Any trading strategies or any information provided in connection with the company. And I, I nailed it. <laughs> uh, yes, I've done that about 400 times, so I guess I don't need it typed out. But uh, I, I, I do want to stress, I'm, I'm kind of like a, a bit of a software guy. I'm not uh, licensed to give you investment advice. I'm not going to do that. I uh, just want to show you really kind of the software we created with Steve, uh, the what we call Candle <coughs> Profit Systems. Um, LJ asked the questions, do you trade your own stuff? I actually trade Steve's stuff uh, quite a bit. I'm going to show you <coughs> a chart of the Dow, which is one of the ones that I've taken quite a few trades off of. Not all of them, but quite a few of them. It's worked out really, really well. So. Um, I, I wouldn't trade without Metastock. A lot of our customers share the same opinion. And um, so in any case, let's go ahead and kind of get to kind of what this product is, what it does. If you guys have questions, um, throw them out there. Um, I'll be happy to do my best to answer them as long as they don't take it too, us too far off of where we're going. And it's going to be a fairly um, straightforward session. You know, I really, uh, a, a few of you have asked, how do you scan? Well, it's really, really easy with Metastock. So, short 
<coughs> a little bit. <coughs> Give me just a second. I'm going to mute while I clear my throat a little bit. All right. I think I got that out of the way. It's allergy season here in Salt Lake City, Utah. So um, they're in full force. So in any case, um, the result of all of the work that we did with Steve is we basically built uh, what we call an add-on for Metastock that it uh, basically identifies 21 or uh, so of his patterns and I've kind of listed them out in a grid type of format so you can see exactly what they're what we're looking for in this product. So we're looking for your fry pans, you're looking for your t line crunches, your doji best friends, um, all of his, uh, your fry pan bottom, your J hook, uh, all of those patterns are kind of identified by the software and uh, automatically displayed and labeled. And as a result of kind of getting them coded and exactly right, uh, we can also scan for these patterns. So, and I'm gonna kind of walk you through exactly what that means and uh, uh, what that means on a chart. So I've got that chart open. I don't like to spend a lot of time in PowerPoint. I just, I just don't. Um, so this is a chart of the Dow Industrial Average. Or actually, in this case, it's the DIA ETF, uh, which is uh, I like to trade options on the DIA ETF. Um, on here, what we're doing is I've got uh, automatically, uh, by applying this template, I've got uh, Steve's stochastics on here. I've got his T-line, his three, and his the exponential moving that he moving averages that he wants to apply. It's very very easy to apply this as a template, and it just comes up and it'll look pretty much what, like what you're seeing. It's, you just say apply this as a template, and it just kind of sets everything up for you. Um, you'll notice that we have the identification of all of the patterns. We had a bear kicker right here. Uh, we had a Doji best friend pretty much at the bottom right here, which is a great signal. Followed by a lot of buy signals all the way kind of up this trend that we had after this fall down. Uh, right here we had a doji at the top, which was pretty awesome indication that something was coming. Uh, it did. And we had a, a doji left right and a bo uh, uh, <laughs> left right bullish combo. Uh, uh, followed by a bolt kicker. So you can, it automatically labels them on the chart. Uh, if you're not too familiar with Steve's patterns, maybe this is the first time you've seen Steve speak. I'd say you're in a pretty good place to learn a lot. Um, but what we've done in the software is, is we've kind of created definitions for all of these patterns, and kind of explanations in terms of what we're looking for. And we call that uh, our expert advisor, our expert commentary. So for example, if I click on, uh, I'll just click on view here, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up our expert commentary. And when I do that, you'll notice, if I kind of zoom in right here, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a triangle that's looking at basically the last day on the day. In this case, it's May 19th, so it's looking at May 19th. We didn't have really much to talk about today, so it just kind of tells you a little bit about the Canva Profit Systems, uh, a, a lot about Mr. Bigelow, Steve, and uh, that kind of stuff. I can move this arrow around, so if I wanted to see what it was saying to us on like the Stoji best friend pattern that happened right here, I can actually just click below the price bar and that'll move for me. And here it's going to basically tell us the doji in an oversold condition followed by a gap up, or basically your doji best friend, gives you a little bit of advice on what to do with that pattern. So you should be alert for this opportunity to get into a new long position, a gap up after a doji or spinning top formation while prices are in the oversold area is an excellent alert. Expect the strength of the uptrend to be greater if the last bar closed above the eight exponential moving average. And get out of the trade if the subsequent trading closes below the exponential moving average or down below the doji signal. So it's kind of giving you some advice on, okay, you should look to go long right now because you just had your doji best friend. Here is the doji followed by that gap up that we're talking about. Uh, it's uh, 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 specifically what we're looking for is basically prices in the oversold area with the stochastics below 20 preferably. Uh, and then the next day a gap up in prices. And you'll notice we actually kind of look for the full condition. So a lot of people look at these charts and they'll be like, well, that's not a doji. Yeah, but it's the doji best friend because we had a doji followed by that gap up, okay? Um, we also, because a lot of times what you're going to do is you're going to scan and you're gonna maybe have a list of the doji best friend patterns that you wanna look at. And so what we did was we kind of, I, uh, we went through uh, with Steve's help and actually kind of give you some ideas on what we should look at to specifically enhance the pattern. 
So for example, in this particular case, if it happens further away from the doji um, and below the eight exponential moving average, the higher the probability the reversal is, or if the day after the doji gapped up, the T-line crosses above the T-line, the higher uh, possibility the uptrend is. So it gives you some advice in terms of how to do some additional filtering if you would want to. Um, <clears throat> uh, Ivan asked a question, when does it get labeled as a signal on the chart? Is it, it's one thing to say a doji at the up top left, and but when does it appear on the right side? It'll appear when it happens. Uh, so it will happen on the bar that it happened uh, on. Uh, that I would recommend that you wait until pretty close to the end of the bar that you're looking at, uh, because actually today is a pretty good example of that. Today we had uh, a bear kicker signal that formed on this bar, um, which is a, a, a basically a, a well a bear kicker. Let me just cheat a little bit here. Um, is uh, uh, a large bullish candle forms at the end of an uptrend, the second day gaps down below the previous day, but because the stochastic criteria failed at the end of the day, it basically went away. But it will appear basically in real time. And my advice would be to try to wait till the close of the business day uh, to kind of exercise that signal. It, it forms on the right, on the day. Okay, hopefully that ends. Uh, William asked a question about auto trading off of the signals. It doesn't actually do auto trading. The nice thing about Metastock is you can use it with whatever brokerage you're using right now. You don't necessarily have to move a bunch of funds into Metastock and that kind of stuff. Um, it basically, uh, uh, it's just basically uh, something that's going to help you find these and that kind of stuff. Okay. Now says, well, where is your exit sign? We don't have exits enabled. A lot of times what you're going to do is you're going to get out based on a cross of the T-line, uh, like Steve teaches. So uh, because of the way that we manage the patterns, we're just showing you the entry patterns on the chart. Uh, okay, says, so how comfortable is it to trade with these predictions? They're all at lagging, right? I actually don't think candlesticks are looking at lagging patterns. Uh, sure, the, you could say the exponential moving average is a bit of a lagging indicator because it's a moving average. But uh, what you're looking, f I don't, uh, in my opinion, candlestick signals are not lagging indicators. Uh, Metastock, uh, Metastock uh, the, William asked a question about Metastock. Um, is it a scanning software? It does do scanning. Uh, obviously, it does charting because we're looking at a chart right now. Uh, to kind of give you a little bit of a background on Metastock, uh, just real briefly, uh, Metastock is a software program that for the last uh, 24 years in a row has been rated number one uh, by the readers of Stocks and Commodities magazine. Um, it's a software that does quite a few things. Um, uh, we're going to be talking primarily about scanning and the expert advice and the alert capabilities today. Uh, but in addition to that, it uh, is backed by one of the best news and data providers, talks and Reuters uh, in the industry. Uh, and it also does some statistical forecasting that's patent pending. Uh, so it's a huge toolbox. Uh, at the heart of it is scanning uh, and testing and uh, charting and uh, uh, real-time advice and alerts. So hopefully that helps you. Um, you can apply this to any time frame. Yes, Richard? Absolutely. Uh, okay. There was a lot of questions earlier, and I promised to show how easy it is to do scanning in Metastock. So I'm going to jump into that right now. If I click on the Power Console right here, this basically kind of gives us an idea of kind of what all the tools are in Metastock. So to open up a chart, we could just type in an instrument here. Uh, we could open it up with that template we were just looking at. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to show you how to do an exploration, so, or what a scan, basically. We call them explorations in Metastock. Uh, you also have system testing that's available and forecasting, which we're not really going to cover uh, too much. Uh, these two power tools, they're very, very powerful, but I really want to talk about scanning because uh, it's one of our best features, the ability to go in through thousands of securities and pare down a list of the things that you're interested in uh, is, is, is second to none. So let me go ahead and kind of make this a bit of a full screen so you can see it a little bit clearer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the Explore button right here. Okay. Uh, what I've done is, uh, with all of the actual scans that are built into Metastock, we, we call them uh, candle profit systems. So it has a CPS as, as kind of a, 
uh, prefix. So they're all in the same place in your list. And if I hover over any of these scans, it's actually going to tell me what we're looking for. So this particular scan is going to look for your doji best friends, your doji at the top, your left-right combos, uh, and your doji bearish, whereas this will look for your j-hook patterns, this will look for your power signals, and this will look for your price patterns. So uh, generally, I'm just going to, I'm going to run the doji dynamo right, right, right here. There's other, a couple of bonus scans um, that we developed kind of after the fact. And this, uh, we call them the CPS Universe scan and the CPS Universe that's oversold scan. Uh, the reason these kind of came out as a little bit of a bonus after the fact is Steve and I were having a conversation um, after we designed the product, and he's like, you know, I really want to be able to find stocks that uh, and build a list of stocks that are above, I think it was $5, and have a certain volume minimum. And how do I do that in meta stock? And so we very quickly put together uh, a scan that actually did that. And so actually we made that available as a bonus scan. So we can take this. Basically, you can run against a market of stock, and it's just going to build a watch list, a stock, that, a list that you can scan every day that will tell you uh, that basically fits these minimum requirements for trading. And uh, so those, those are two bonus items that uh, are available. I'm in, actually including them with the software uh, purchase today, but they basically just build a watch list for you. Uh, I ran it today, uh, and I ran it against... Um, the optionable list. So right here we've got a list of optional stock that's about 4,400. It paired that list down to about 2,600. So it filtered out roughly about 40% of the stocks that are in the universe so that we can just scan these ones. So the process for scanning is quite simple. Basically you decide on the scan or the scans that you want to run and you just put a check mark in the ones that you want to run. So if you want to run all of them, just go ahead and click all of them. And it's that simple. Down here is the list that's available in Metastock. And I could, I've already created this pre-filtered list, so I could just put a check mark there to scan for the pre-filtered stocks. Or if you're maybe like an ETF trader, um, I'll go ahead and uh, you can go in and you can actually just scan all of the ETFs. There's about 1,800 of them here in the U.S. Or if you just want to do the optionable stocks, you just click right there. That'll scan all of the optionable stocks for you. If you're in Canada and you want to do Canadian ETFs, you can do that. You can do the TSX Venture Exchange, uh, pretty much anything that you want to. One of the big things that we have uh, going for Metastock is the fact that we get all of our data from Reuters. And if you're not familiar with Reuters, I'll just give you, I'll just tell you it's a huge company. They make about $19 billion a year. Um, and uh, our universe of stocks and instruments that we cover is actually 375,000 instruments that you can scan against. So that, what that means to you is if you're interested, let's say that you're in London and you want to scan London stocks. Well, you can't. Say you're in Australia. I saw some guy say he was from Australia a little bit earlier today. I welcome. I love Australia. Uh, but you can't. That list is available. If you want to come in here and say scan, for example, just the stocks that are on the S&P 500, we have the list of all the S&P indexes that are available. And literally, your process to do that is you just put a check mark right in the box that you want to scan, and then you're basically going to click your Start Exploration button. That's really the process. That's all you have to do. Tell it what scans you want to run and what list you want it to run against. Um, I really love the way they've designed this. It's such a simple thing to do. Um, and just with a couple clicks of a mouse button, I can actually go through the instruments I'm interested in and find the stocks that actually have a pattern. Um, I ran this uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, I ran basically the Doji Dynamite against the, uh, the pre-filtered list. And I'll just show you what the report looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the report here. Uh, basically, so this was a scan that's looking for like your Doji best friends, your left-right bullish, your left-right bearish, your series of bullish, and your series of bearish. Um, out of the 2,400 or so that I scanned, uh, only about five actual stocks came back with a pattern. So we had Nodine, NCI, Ternium, uh, whatever this is and whatever this is. Those are the only ones we'd actually have to look at uh, today. So we've already filtered that down, list down from about 4,400 to about 2,300 that we're going to scan every day to now five that actually have an opportunity that's available for you in the marketplace. Uh, such a cool capability. Uh, I remember we were doing a major multi-person event uh, one time, and uh, I had a chat comment that came in that said, 
So Meta sucks like the garbage man. It takes out all the trash and just leaves me with what I want to look at. That's a bit, yeah, that's, I guess, a pretty good way to describe it. So, um, oh, uh, okay. Um, so, so there you go. Uh, John says CPS is not is available. Oh, well, uh, John, we actually um, uh, thanks for using Metastock number one um, and number two. They do have some pretty good upgrade specials, so I'd encourage you to contact us. He says CPS is not available on my version of Metastock. Um, Steve says, what about the best computer system to reduce the scanning time? That might be something you want to want to take. Um, I have a Dell refurbished model, and uh, it actually is pretty quick. Uh, the biggest thing is kind of how fast the internet can react for you and that kind of stuff. Um, John asks, can you highlight? Uh, yeah, you click on, uh, see, that's how easy the program is to run. So now if I wanted to open up a chart, uh, John, you just highlight the one that you want to look at. If you wanted to look at all of them, for example, you could highlight all of them. Go ahead and click on open chart, uh, and I can open up all of those charts uh, right there on the fly. So uh, let's see, we're getting a little bit of a error message on one of them. Um, on this one, this is actually a, uh, the wrong, it's a weekly chart. Uh, you'll notice that I've got the expert attached, but I'm looking at a weekly. The scan I ran was on a daily basis. So let me go ahead and switch that to a daily basis. And there you've got your left right bullish uh, combo. Here you, again, you've got your specific create, uh, criteria that created the alert and your enhancements. So it's all set up and ready to go. Um, yes, uh -huh. William, I just opened uh, one of the charts, or actually all of the charts that, that, that the actual exploration found. Uh, Phil asked a good question. Is it compatible with Thinkorswim? A lot of us uh, here at Metastock actually use, uh, myself included, TD Ameritrade to trade. Um, so it is compatible in that way, but it basically requires that you have a Met, the Metastock software program. So again, the nice thing is you don't have to open up a brokerage. Uh, you can just basically get the product. And uh, the, we've put together, uh, I'll talk about it a little bit, we've actually put together a package deal that's a, an insanely low price that will allow you to get both for one cost. So I'll talk about that in a second. Um, uh, a question came in, can you also scan for intraday? So we did a daily scan. If you wanted to do an intraday scan, right here is the interval setting. That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked it. Um, right here, you can set it to different periodicity. So you can run it against like a 30-minute or a 60-minute bar, 240-minute bar, and it will come back with results here. Okay. Uh, and then says, can we sign up for a trial? The, the packages that we're going to offer, I'm just going to go ahead. The data feed is also included. Let's go ahead and uh, I, I really appreciate your interest here. I'm going to actually kind of go in and just kind of spoil it. So in a nutshell, that's what it does. It's for explorations. There's the explorations. I'm also going to throw in, like I said, those bonus pre-filter explorations uh, as part of the package. Uh, we kind of talked about the expert commentary and that kind of stuff. Here's a list of patterns that are included. One of the things uh, I've just been, this is probably um, our one of our most popular products, the Steve Bigelow product. Um, it's been, um, in every every year, I talked a little bit about our Stocks and Commodities Awards and the fact that we've won for literally 23 years in a row. One of the things I'm really proud about with the Candle Profit System is one of the categories in that Stocks and Commodities Reader's Choice Award is um, the uh, best add-on. And it's actually rated uh, as one of the top add-ons, I think, three times now. So it's been extremely successful. Uh, it's like I said, one of the one of the primary ones I actually use in my own trading, and that's saying a lot. And um, here's kind of the way the packages work break down. Okay, and keep in mind, you asked about a little bit of a trial. This actually comes with a money back guarantee. This whole package. So basically, the kind of profit system. If you go up to my website and you purchase it, it's going to cost $3.99. Uh, you could get a Metastock one-time purchase license for uh, for uh, the Metastock DC package, which is about 500 bucks. You could get uh, three months of data for uh, be $25 a month, basically. Um, I'm also going to throw in a, a, a product to help you get running with the software. It's called Unleash Your Power of Metastock. It's normally 99 bucks. I'm going to throw in, uh, or Steve is going to throw in an access to his room so you can go in there and learn a little bit about the training. Uh, that's normally about a $99. Um, 
you get the one month of his option edge newsletter, which is $147. Uh, you also get those pre-filter scans. And I'm actually running a bonus training session. I'll actually be in London when I do this. Uh, on June 4th, I'll be doing some business down in London. But I'm going to log in and actually show you how to set up all of your scan, walk you through them, um, um, and just show you how to run everything. So I'm going to do that session as well. That's going to be June 4th, uh, so it's a week from Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, which will be about 3 o'clock for noon in the afternoon. Uh, the normal cost, if you just bought this off separately, is $1,500. Um, I'm going to give a package price. Uh, I've got special approval from my management team to really just give you a huge discount on it. So $799, basically, for all of this stuff. And um, everything you need, basically, for three months to get going. Uh, we do have a, a smaller version of that package. It includes the Canva Profit system. It includes the subscription version of Metastock for three months. Still includes the, the training sessions and a month of candlestick forum access. Normally that would be a thousand dollars, but you can get it for four ninety nine. Uh, this is basically <laughs> okay. So do you have the Rahul Mohinder oscillator? Yes, that's another really really good system, and uh, it's in Metastock as well. Uh, Jill says, where do you put your stops and things? Um, you're looking for a trade either. A, below uh, the entry bar usually, we actually say this in the commentary, or below the T line. Uh, okay, William asked a question. It's a really good question. If you pay $7.99, is that the only price you have to pay for the bundle to get access to the software forever? Uh, no, actually, uh, that's basically, that'll include three months of DC data, which is basically an hourly updated by the data. Um, which is normally 25 bucks a month. So that includes three months of access to that data. Your only ongoing cost after that is $24.95 a month. And you can prepay that for a yearly rate of uh, $240 if you want. <coughs> uh, Harry asked for, uh, um, okay, there's a very popular uh, technician called Rahul Mohindar. Uh, and um, he has a system that's called Oscillator. Uh, I've done probably a couple hundred webinars on that one. It's a very, very good system. Uh, it is included in Metastock. So. Uh, Jill, that is correct. This is for the what we call the Metastock DC uh, package. Uh, basically, it includes hourly updates in the software, uh, not real time. If you're really interested in real time, uh, we do have a, uh, basically, I'd recommend you give us a call at 800-882-3040 because they, uh, they have a really good discount on that as well. Uh, the update on the, the, uh, the quotes is day is hourly for this uh, JS. So for this particular package, it's for the, it includes Metastock, the one-time license, it's only $500 on our website. It includes CPS, uh, three months of data, unleashed power of Metastock. Uh, the access to candlestick forum and then all of the bonuses as well. 25 bucks, John, uh, per month is the cost for data uh, after that three months. So uh, basically, I spend more on coffee <laughs> and, I, uh, and well worth it. Uh, Russell, that is correct. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. Okay. We do have people that are uh, available as well tonight. Uh, it is a special uh, uh, offer. We didn't even create a website for it. This is the lowest I've ever actually made Metastock available for you. I wanted to, um, it's a it's a steal. Normally this would cost you 1500 bucks. It's 7.99. it has a 30 day money back guarantee. Uh, so if you, Take advantage of it at 800-882-3040. If you have questions, uh, maybe you're calling in international, you can log on to our website at metastock.com slash sales chat, and that will allow you to chat with one of our guys. Okay. I don't see a lot of more questions. Um, uh, give us a call. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for coming tonight, guys. I hope that was beneficial for you. Uh, it is one of my, my, I might be a little bit overselling it, but it is one of my favorite products. And I'm very, very proud of the success it's had in our database. 
If you haven't used Metastock before, um, you should. $7.99 is a steal. And not only that, you have a money back guarantee, so if you don't like it, you can actually get a refund of that. And there's a reason it's actually been rated number one in its price category for 24 years in a row. So give it a try. Uh, you're never gonna, you're probably not gonna see another price like that for a while. Uh, it's good. What you'll definitely want to do is sign up before June 4th so you can come to my special training class to help you get everything set up and running. And uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. Um, a couple more questions. Uh, our website is metastock.com. The phone number is 800-882-3040. I'll type that in. Uh, Tom asked a good question about does a lifetime license apply to newly compu uh, uh, purchased computers lately. One of the things I like with the way the licensing system works in Metastock these days, which is uh, uh, basically is you can install Metastock on as many machines as you want to. So if you have a laptop, you can install it there. That's fine. If you want to install it at work and you can, they give, like, give you permission. That's fine. If you want to install it at home, that's fine. The only limitation is really how many you log into at the same time. That's it. And uh, so, I'll, and as an extension to that, to make sure I answer your question, Tom, yes, that will include newly purchased computers as well. Uh, if you buy a new computer, it's always fun, but just log into uh, the metastock.com website, re-download the software, and you'll be good to go. That looks like the end of the question. So if I missed him, um, send me an email. Uh, Uh, there's my email address. William asks, what is the difference between the two offers? Package one, the big difference is you don't get the lifetime license of Metastock. You get the Metastock subscription for three months. After that, it's like $59 a month. And then the other big difference is you're not going to get this options edge uh, for $147 with it as well. Uh, DC stands for daily charts. We, we have offered two versions of um, Metastock. We offer RT, which is real time, and Metastock DC, which is daily charts. Uh, Harry, yes. So uh, with Metastock, the way the licensing works is you can log on to one, uh, you can have it installed on as many machines as you want with your license, but you can only use it on one machine at a time. Meaning, um, if you uh, if if you're using it on your home computer and then switch to your laptop, it'll turn off your home computer for you. Options Edge is one of uh, Steve's uh, services, and it's, uh, from what I hear, it's pretty good, but I don't know too much about it. It's one of the things uh, Steve's throwing in as part of a bonus offer. Um, GL for RT charts, so Better Stock Real Time um, is uh, basically about $1,400 as a one-time purchase. Uh, you can do that also on a, on a three-month trial as well. And uh, what I would recommend that you do is just give us a call. We can kind of go through what you're trading and what your options are and they can kind of put you out for what the real-time product would be. Uh, Ivan says, I purchased Metastock. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ivan. SCPS a couple years ago. I do not have the two bonus scans. Can I get them somehow? Drop me an email. Uh, Jeffrey.gb at metastock.com. I'll uh, send them over to you. They're pretty easy to install. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, have a great evening. Thanks for your time tonight, and let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, if you have, aren't familiar with Metastock, it's probably one of the most comprehensive scanning software uh, programs you'll come across. And it doesn't matter what you're scanning, whether it's uh, futures, currencies, anything. Uh, they've got the uh, feeds that can that that do it all. So the thing that you're going to find out about Metastock is if you find the things that you like on or that you're using, they've got a ton of additional information that you can keep uh, testing and seeing if you can improve uh, your charts. So with that, everybody, have a good evening. We'll see you in the chat rooms. Thanks, Steve.